Welcome. During this video, we will quickly build a responsive mobile and web application using Visual Lance's low-code development platform. This is the application we're about to build. It leverages Google Material Design for the user interface and is optimized to run on large and small screens alike. Let's get started. Since this welcome screen is the very first thing every developer sees after installing Visual Lanza, we'll use it as our jump off point to build our first application. But don't worry, we will get into the IDE when we enhance the application later on. Clicking yes brings us into a wizard that will help generate most of our application for us straight out of the box. When we scroll down, the wizard briefly describes the three key components of a Visual Lanza responsive web application, as well as a link to a video series on how to get started building your first application. Our first step in this process is to give our application a name and a prefix. We'll just leave those entries as is. Next, we continue by answering the questions that will create the menu and the content areas for our application. Since the first view or content area is pre-filled already, let's just walk through the parameters. The name of our application is contacts, and currently it's set to maintain a database table. The table we will maintain is called xContacts, and we will allow users to search, create, read, update, and delete data from the xContacts table, and we'll visualize the data as three line items per row. Next, we need to nominate which columns from the X contacts table will appear in those three line items. The wizard makes it easy because all the columns appear here in these dropdowns. Let's move on to view two. Let's call it products. We'll set it to maintain a database. We want to maintain the products table, so if we type in prod, we see all the tables matching that keyword. Let's select X product, which means all of the columns will now be loaded into those line item dropdowns and choose product ID for line one, description for line two, and price for line three. Now that we're done with view two, let's finish up with view three. We'll call it tasks and just leave it as a placeholder for now because we're going to build this view from scratch later on. The last step is selecting a theme color, which will standardize the color palette for things like the menu bar, app bar, hover colors, complementary accent colors, and much more all based on Google Material Design guidelines. The final step is to click the Build button and we're done. What's happening in the background is that Visual Lanza is building and generating all the server-side components, the UI for the client side, and all the middleware to wire everything together. Now that it's finished, we have the choice to package everything up and run it in the cloud or run the application locally. Here's our application. Let's sign in so we can see the contacts with the three line item layout that we selected during the wizard. When we select a contact, its data is represented in a modal window where we can view or update the information. Notice all of the data elements adhere to the Google Material Design guidelines in terms of subtle animations and highlighting, and data elements can also be visualized as richer material design controls as well, like we see here with the contact's birthday. And last but not least, if we blank out Keeley's last name and try to update the contact, Visual Lance's business rule engine kicks in and denies that change. Moving on to the rest of the application, here is the products page, as well as the placeholder for our tasks application. There is also a settings page included where users can change the color theme to their liking. Let's sign off the desktop version so we can see what it looks like on a mobile device. Here's our same list of contacts, and when we select Keely Bray, we can view her details. Material design guidelines are applied to the mobile version as well, as are the business rules. For mobile devices, the menu is hidden until we touch the hamburger icon versus always being visible on the desktop. Here's our products page and the placeholder for tasks. Now that we've finished checking out what we've built so far, let's complete that tasks view. This is the Visual Lanza IDE. Before we open up the application, let's close out the compile window, notifying us that the wizard successfully compiled all of our objects. What were some of these objects, you might ask? Well, there are views, dialogues, and server modules. Views and dialogues are just screens, and I'll explain what server modules are momentarily. Let's open up our application inside the screen painter. From here, we have access to the app bar up top, to the menu on the left, and all of our views on the right. If you look closely at each view, you'll notice there's a real-time rendering of each screen. 
let's open up tasks so we can convert it from a placeholder to a real view. So at the moment, tasks is nothing more than an empty panel with a label on it. We need to drop a data table onto our screen so we can see our list of tasks. From the controls section here, we have access to a complete set of mobile and web controls, all based on Google's material design guidelines. We have access to items like badges and buttons and cards, which is very popular for mobile, just to name a few. Here is the data table, so let's drag it onto our screen. Instead of leaving the table here in a fixed position, let's have Visual Lanza automatically manage the height and width for us for all the various screen sizes we may encounter. And how about we also add 10 pixels of padding so it's a little easier on the eye. All right, now we need to get some data into this table. Within the repository tab, we have access to all the table definitions that Visual Lanza knows about, whether they were created with Visual Lanza or imported from an external database. Now that we've located our table X task, we can start dragging the columns that we want to appear onto our table, task ID and task name. Now that we're done assigning columns, it's time to wire it up to the database. To do that, we right mouse click on the grid, select the initialize event, and now we're in the source editor. Remember when I said we'd learn more about server modules? Well, a server module, as the name suggests, is a program that encapsulates the access to the database tables and enables us to quickly bind them to controls. And we need one of these in order to get our data. We could just call an existing server module, but let's pretend we've never interacted with this table before, and therefore, the server module doesn't exist. It's super simple to create a brand new server module. Let's call it my underscore task server module. It's a server module for X task, and let's point it to the X task table. And finally, let Visual Lanza create everything we need. While the server module compiles, here are the routines that the wizard just created for us. We can modify them, we can create our own, but for this video, we'll just keep everything as is. And the routine that we'll be using today is right here, called find all. Now that it's compiled, let's close it out so we can bind it to our data table. Here we are back in the source code editor. The first thing we need to do is reference the server module that we just built. To do that, we use the define.com command. Notice the IntelliSense is kicking in and we can select the server module that we just built. Again, here are all of the routines for the server module. We want find all, and let's call this routine get all tasks. Now that we've referenced our server module, we can invoke it from inside the initialize event. As we start typing, it finds the get all tasks that we referenced up above, and we want to execute it asynchronously as to provide the best user experience. And the last parameter is just saying where to put the data, and we'll put it in our table called list, and that's it. We're done. Just two lines of code one to reference the server module and one to execute it asynchronously to bind the data set to the table. Now that it's compiled, time to test. Before we click the execute button, notice the real-time rendering displays our list of tasks instead of a label when it used to be a placeholder. All right, let's log in and check out our new application. And here is our new list of tasks. If we switch over to mobile, notice the menu disappears and becomes optimized for the mobile device. So there you go. Now you know how easy it is to develop applications with Visual Lanza. If you'd like to learn more or try it for free, head over to lanza.com where you will find plenty of additional information, customer testimonials, and more important, a link to download the software directly from the homepage. Thanks so much for watching.